uh, <coughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, dear Kariakos, uh, Excellencies, uh, friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here uh, once again participating in your winter meeting and speaking to the distinguished members of the Parliamentary Assembly uh, together with our allies and friends, the uh, High uh, Commissioner Michel Bachelet and Arlem uh, Desir, uh, the representative on freedom of the media. And we are speaking here on an important topic that in a way defines our common efforts, which is multilateralism. The Parliamentary Assembly, and especially this committee, represent an essential tool to promote human rights and democracy throughout the 57 countries of the OSCE. At the same time, you are a key part of the larger international toolbox for a lack of a better, better term, that we need not only to promote, but also to protect what we have already gained. In this toolbox, we have the UN, the OECE, Council of Europe, and a host of other indispensable actors. In the last few months, I have found myself quite often looking back, revisiting our roots, and reflecting on our past work to put the present into context, to better understand the present. It is an appropriate time to do so around the 30th anniversary of the peaceful revolutions that brought down the Berlin Wall, uniting Europe after years of division. When we look back, we see that we have traveled a long path over these 30 years guided by the human dimension commitments that are a core element of the OSCE's comprehensive security uh, approach. We have done this together, governments, parliaments, civil society, and institutions, and that is why we have truly been able to see great progress, because we have joined forces. It is to con contribute to our common security that my office, the ODIR, observes elections. Closely, of course, in cooperation with the Parliamentary Assembly and uh, uh, follows also the developments in human rights and democracy, provides expert advice to participating states on draft laws, builds capacity of law enforcement and judges and supports civil society, just to mention a few things where we are involved. All of this is based on our joint commitments that were mainly adopted in the optimistic 90s, in the beginning actually of the optimistic 90s. But, but from where I am sitting, from Odir, I see increasing challenges in implementing those commitments. I would like to touch briefly upon some of the particular challenges where I believe we can increase our work together. Those are the same challenges I, I recalled at a recent hearing at the US Helsinki Commission, which was a unique opportunity for me to speak to some of your members. Unfortunately, in many countries of the world nowadays, we seem to be gripped by an ever-deepening polarization in which some political leaders and their voters believe that anyone who disagrees with them is an enemy. OT was established almost 30 years ago to help countries strengthen their democratic institutions and develop systems to ensure full respect of human rights. This was never easy. In fact, it has become even more difficult as we see an increasing number of political leaders, as I said, deliberately dismantling the fundamental pillars of the democratic system that we have worked so hard to build up in, uh, for decades. And they are seeking somehow to remove democratic checks and balances and gradually eroding standards. There is scarcely let me mention another challenge. There is scarcely a greater calamity that can befall individuals and their families than being forcibly displaced. And yet, we are seeing hatred against them, 
even in our own countries that are so wealthy. Racism, intolerance, and hatred are flourishing on the street and online. The age old scores of anti Semitism show little signs of abating, and we have also increased our focus on combating anti Muslim hatred as physical attacks as well as hate speech have grown. And we just saw the new, newest heinous attack happening last night in Germany. And let me just use this opportunity to express my condolences to those who were affected by this heinous attack. The, currently, in many places across the OSE region, a healthy civil society often seen not as a security partner, but as a security risk. The pressure on civic space takes many forms, from legislation restricting the operation of civil society, civil attacks, politically motivated lawsuits or arrests, cutting funding, state restrictions on the freedom to hold public gatherings or protests, or negative statements and even online smear campaigns against people working in the civil society organizations. Threats often come from the state, but not always. Women activists are particularly vulnerable to pressure and attacks from public shaming on the internet through to sexual violence. To be able to tackle the challenges to democracy and human rights that we are faced with, and I've just outlined some of them, like-minded people and organizations need to join forces and work together. Older is part of the solution as we are a tool created by the participating states to assist them in implementing their commitment. Older works with governments, parliaments, national human rights institutions, civil society, and international partners to help strengthening, for example, judicial independence, fight for gender equality, and protect the most vulnerable groups in our societies. This is the essence of our work. But we can only succeed in partnership with others. Our joint efforts in election observation are a case in point. And some of you are, have participated in these observation missions and know that quite well. Another case in point in the close and wide-ranging cooperation we have, uh, we have is with my fellow panelists here today. I'm often asked whether there is not too much duplication between institutions. My answer remains the same. No, because there is enough work to do for all of us, and there's no lack of challenges to attend to, and together we multiply our reach and make better use of our efforts. With High Commissioner Bachelet, we cooperate on issues ranging from migration, anti-trafficking and human rights in the armed forces, to rule of law and the situation of Roma and Sinti. This partnership is very important to us, and I hope we will have the good fortune to strengthen it further. With my colleague, Arlen Desir, and his expert staff, I think I may safely say that we have a very close and regular cooperation of both substance and also on practical terms. But turning back to you, the parliamentarians, I encourage you to make use of us. Reach out to us when you think we could assist you in your role, not only as members of the Parliamentary Assembly, but also as national legislators. A good example of how we can raise issues was last summer at our joint meeting in Georgia on parliamentary oversight. The parliamentarians from the region exchanged views, experiences and good practices on how to hold governments to account. In fact, this meeting was so successful that Armenia has offered to host our next joint conference in June this year, which will focus on parliamentary ethics, a topic which is close to my heart as a former parliamentarian. Ladies and gentlemen, we recognize that we can't do our work alone. We rely on our many partners, the Parliamentary Assembly, the whole OSE family, other international organizations, civil society and governments to support our work. 
Without these elements of this great multilateral fabric, our work would not have impact. I do believe that together we do even more to further improve the impact of our work. Your voices as parliamentarians, your influence are weighty tools that can open doors and open minds and can stand in the way of regression and hate. Help us do what we were created to do, supporting the state to respect and foster fundamental freedoms and democracy. Together we have a strong voice, which we must be ready to use on a grand scale, because global challenges require global solutions. Uh, not, you know, a few weeks ago, I attended a commemoration event in uh, Auschwitz, commemorating the 75 years of the liberation of Auschwitz. I listened there to a, a survivor from, from the Holocaust, Marian Tursky, and he uh, mentioned and stressed uh, what we really need to remember, and that is that uh, the Holocaust and Auschwitz did not fall from the sky. It happened gradually. And he remembered and he, 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 he uh, emphasized the words of a former, also a former Holocaust survivor, Primo Levi, who formulated what he called the 11th Amendment. And the 11th Amendment is, thou shall not be indifferent. And I think this is something we all should memorize and we all should uh, try to uh, live and uh, uh, exercise to not to be indifferent to the lives and uh, uh, sufferings of others. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes.